Welcome to Electron Line. Here's our next example of using the variation of parameters method. It appears like it's a simple problem, but you'll find that using the variation of parameters method, there's a lot of work involved. We just have to go through it very systematically. And again, we're using this method on an example that has constant coefficients so that later on we can use the same method for more complex type of problems where we have non-constant coefficients. So let's do this one as an example again. First of all, we need to find the homogeneous part of the solution because after all, the general solution is the sum of the homogeneous plus the particular solution. So the homogeneous equation will look as follows. It would be y double prime plus y equals zero. The characteristic equation therefore becomes r squared plus 1 equals 0, or r squared is equal to negative 1. And so when we take the square root of both sides, you can see we get in two imaginary roots that r is going to be equal to plus or minus i. That means that the homogeneous part of the solution is going to be equal to, since we don't have a real part in the complex number here, we're going to have c1 times the cosine of t plus c2 times the sine of t. And then we realize that the particular part of the solution is going to be equal to some unknown function u1, which we're trying to find, times y1 plus another unknown function u2 times y2. Of course, y1 and y2 are cosine of t and sine of t. And so the objective is to find u1 and u2. To do that, we're going to need the Ronskian. The Ronskian of y1 and y2, which is equal to the determinant of y1, y2, y1 prime, and y2 prime, which is going to be equal to y1 and y2 are the cosine and the sine, and the derivative of the cosine is the negative sine, and the derivative of the sine is the positive cosine which means that this is equal to the product of those two, which is the cosine square of t, minus the product of those two. Of course, we have a minus here that becomes plus the sine square of t, which is equal to 1. That makes it easier. The round skin in this case is equal to 1. So now we find u1. u1 is equal to the negative integral of y2 times g of t, which is the cosine of t, times dt, divided by the Ronskin, which is 1. So this is equal to the negative of y2, which is a sine of t, times g of t, which is a cosine of t, times dt. Now we need to integrate that. Now just in case, I've put some identities up there. We can see that the sine of 2x is equal to twice the sine of x times the cosine of x. So we're going to use this identity. This is equal to 1 half times the sine of 2x. So this can be written as negative one-half times the integral of the sine of 2x, or in this case, sine of 2t times dt. Well, we're going to need a 2dt here, and of course, we then also have to divide by 2. So we multiply by 2 and divide it by 2. Now we can integrate. This is equal to minus 1 over 4 times the integral of the sine of 2t is the negative cosine of 2t. This negative will cancel out that, that negative. And then we're going to use one more trigonometric identity. We can say that the cosine of 2x is equal to 1 minus twice the sine square of x. Now at this point you may not realize well, why in the world would I want to do that, but you'll see later that there's an advantage to that. So first we'll take care of the negatives here. That would be equal to a positive 1 quarter. So it would be the cosine of 2x is equal to that. So we have 1 quarter times 1 minus 2 times the sine square of t. So now we have a good form of u1. Now we need to find u2. And u2 is equal to the positive integral of y1 g of t dt divided by the Ronskian, which is equal to now, y1 is a cosine of t, so that gives us the integral of the cosine of t times g of t, which is the cosine of t times dt. Of course, here we have the cosine square of t, and the Ronskian again was equal to 1. So now we're going to replace the cosine square of t 
by this identity right here. So this is equal to one half times the integral of one plus the cosine of two t times dt. And that's a lot easier to integrate than the cosine squared of t. Integrating the one times dt, we get this is equal to one half times, that would be t plus, now notice that we need a 2 dt here to integrate the cosine of 2t, so we have a 1 half to compensate for the 2 dt, and the integral of the cosine would be the sine of 2t. And let's see here, do we want to multiply that out? Mm, let's sine see. of 2t, I'm thinking about what I'm going to do later, so I want to make sure I have something that will cancel, and the sine square of so it's probably better to go back to the single angle. So I'm going to replace the sine of 2t by this. And so the sine of 2t is twice that. That times the 1 half will cancel out the 1 half. So this will be equal to 1 half t plus 1 half, because we still have the 1 half in front, and times the sine of t cosine of t. That's probably better. There we go. So that will be the u2 right here. So we have u2, go ahead and circle that, and we have u1, which is right here. Okay, so now I'm ready to go ahead and find my particular solution. So my particular solution is equal to u1, which is 1 quarter minus 1 half times the sine square of t and the whole thing multiplied times, let's see, y1, which is the cosine of t, and then plus, we have u2, which is 1 half t plus 1 half sine of t cosine of t, and put parentheses around that, and we're going to multiply that times y2, which is the sine of t. All right. Let's see what we end up with when we multiply this out. So this is the particular solution. So this is equal to 1 quarter times the cosine of t. That would be minus 1 half sine square of t times the cosine of t. And then here we have plus 1 half t times the sine of t. And then plus 1 half sine square of t times the cosine of t. And luckily, we can cancel some things out. Notice we have 1 half sine square of t cosine of t and a plus 1 half sine square of t cosine of t. So when we eliminate those, what we have left is the following. This is equal to 1 quarter times the cosine of t from here. And then here we have plus, where am I? Plus right here, plus one half t times the sine of t. And notice that this is the particular solution of this differential equation. So we have the homogeneous solution right here. We have the particular solution. All we have to do now is add them together. And so we can say that the general solution, which is equal to the sum of the homogeneous and the particular solutions, is equal to c1 times the cosine of t plus c2 times the sine of t plus 1 quarter times the cosine of t and plus 1 half t times the sine of t. And this here is the general solution to that differential equation. Again, using the method of variation parameters is somewhat lengthy but it allows you to find the solutions and then later on we can employ that same technique to find solutions to differential equations that do not have constant coefficients. So here we're simply getting used to the method of variation parameters so we can use it for more complex problems later on. And that's how it's done.